you know, I love talking uh, to Lauren Fix because she knows cars so well. And a lot of her eerie warnings about EVs have come to pass right now, especially on word now that Fisker could be on the brink of a default and that a number of other key uh, EV uh, makers and their stocks have been downgraded in just the last 48 to 70 two hours. So Lauren, what the heck? What's going on? Well, it looks Tesla stocks all over the place, but it always has been. But he, right. he's he's a unique piece of the pie because he's, he's the guy right now. He's the guy right? and he, he will survive. I yeah. mean, all the things that I've said about him in the past, I have to say, I give him credit. He has made it happen. He's actually making a little bit of money, uh, but he makes his money off the carbon credits. He sells to other brands. So I give him credit for being smart. Okay. Companies like Lucid just uh, signed a deal for a billion dollars from the Saudis who are investing in his company. So you will see Lucid survive. A billion dollars is a lot of money, but you can't have a loss and make it up in volume. So but you don't think it's a promising technology or you do, it's just not going to dominate the world. It's not going to dominate the world. I think that there's a place for it. Uh, you will never see all electric. And I've said this multiple times, just sort of like I said, cash for clunkers was a bad idea. I, right. Remember that? I remember oh, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, these are the kind of things that that sound great. The cars are fantastic. Every brand is putting out super impressive Beautiful. product. Kia, Hyundai, Honda, Toyota, everybody's putting out cool product, really cool, edgy product that shows that they have the capability. The problem is the infrastructure. And I just drove a, an electric vehicle we were testing in Northern California, four charging stations, fast chargers, one of them was working. And what was there was a Tesla plugged in and the person disappeared. They went to lunch or whatever. Right. Well, that's great. But if you need a charge, you need to get somewhere. No one wants to be relying on this. So the, what the perfect answer is hybrid. Now, think about a Prius back then when everyone said, eh, they're kind of OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that technology is now what people want. They don't want necessarily plug in. They want that hybrid technology. You're going to see a lot of those at the New York Auto Show. You get a lot of miles. Right. And you can drive electric in the city. Right. You want to put around and run your errands. You get about 30 miles of range, up to about 35 miles an hour, and then the gas engine picks up. So if you want to do a trip from New York to but Florida, you can. But there's a difference with the plug-in hybrids versus the regular hybrids. What's right. that about? So a plug-in hybrid means you plug in at a charging station, you get your electricity that way, generated. Okay. And when it runs out of that battery power, 30 miles of range, then it switches. That's the most it does? So it depends. Some really? are 38 miles, or you know, some okay. will be 40 miles. But then you switch onto the gas engine, which is a small fuel efficient engine which uses the electric portion to get the vehicle going so when you hear about these cars that are electrified it's a 48 volt architecture so in other words it uses that electricity to get the car propelled to get it going so you no longer have that what we call turbo lag but you don't see a sudden you know point where we agree on a standard charging method all of a sudden we get more range that it changes and people rush to EVs I don't see that happening. I do like the fact that we're finally getting to using Tesla's charging stations and yes. we're all going to be on the same. In Europe, they don't have this problem. This is a unique problem to North America where everybody's got their own charging connection. Uh, and I know Ford's giving out adapters as well as other brands so you can charge the Tesla charging so interface. So in Europe, it's like a single standard? It's a single standard. So that, we don't that, have that, that allows for growth. Right. It allows for growth. But in, even certain countries like Norway and so forth, they're starting okay. to realize, yeah, this may not be the case with the weather. Because yeah. you can control a lot of things, but you can't control the weather. And when it's cold and snowy, you lose your range. I don't want to get a Norwegian driver. <laughs> what the heck is wrong with you? Uh, Lauren, you're the best. Lauren Fix, I, you. I told you, she is a genius with this stuff. Have you ever thought, why in the world is my wireless bill so darn high? What are we paying all this money for? Speed, coverage, data, access to 5G, unlimited talk and text, mobile hotspots? We are partnering with Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile offers all of these features for as low as $15 per month. They're reimagining the wireless shopping experience and made it easy and online. No stores, no salespeople, just huge direct to you savings. Why should you pay more when you have access to premium wireless? Mint Mobile runs on the nation's largest 5G network. Whether you use your phone to watch YouTube, listen to podcasts or play games, you get the same speed and performance as the big guys while connecting to Mint's network. How hard is it to switch your service? Big Wireless wants you to think it's hard, but switching to Mint is super easy. Thanks to digital e-SIM cards, which most phones now have, you can sign up and activate immediately right on your phone from the comfort of your home. And if your phone doesn't have an e-SIM, Mint will ship you a new SIM card for free. Just go to trymintmobile.com slash Lauren Fix, also linked in the description down below, to get premium wireless for $15 a month.